unexpected turn. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't vlog the entire experience, but uh, I live to tell the story. So this is the story about how I almost chopped my thumb off while camping an hour and a half out of service alone. So I was camping at the Gila Hot Springs campground, which you saw in the intro clips, and it's a very beautiful place. I love it. It's one of the places that you can go explore if you come to my yoga retreat in the Gila National Forest this summer, June 5th through June 9th. So I was there to like get promotional content so that I could promote the retreat and also just enjoy the campground. So I had been there for a few days. I had set up my tent. I had gotten all comfy and cozy and moved in. And then what was it? The fourth night that I was there? I was enjoying the hot springs at sunset and, and then after I walked back to my campsite and I was going to build a fire and make dinner and that's when this happened. So I was chopping the firewood and I had gone to like rebalance the piece of wood because it had fallen over and I don't even really remember clearly how it happened but I guess like before I was able to move my hand this hand came down with the axe like a dummy and uh I chopped my thumb so I chopped it I'll show you on this thumb so you don't have to see the grossness, but I chopped it like at a diagonal, like across the top, and uh, it cut about three quarters of the way through. So I looked down and I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh, and I walked over to the campground host, which luckily, even though I was camping by myself, I was actually at a campground with a campground host, because a lot of the times I'll just camp out in the middle of nowhere on national forest land where nobody's around. So I was able to go over to the camp host and be like, hi, I think I need to go back into town. And he was like, why? Like, let me, let me see your thumb. You know, I have a first aid kit. I can help you out. And I go in to his little like bus home that he lived in. And I took off the wrap that I had on my thumb and he looks at it and he goes, yeah, you need to go into town. <laughs> so he luckily had supplies for me to wrap the thumb well enough to get it to stop bleeding while I drove into town. And then he came and helped me pack down my camp. So the sun was setting and he was eating his dinner and he was kind enough to come back to my camp with me and help me take down my tent and load everything back in my car because there's only so much you can do one-handed when you're literally bleeding out of one thumb. So I'm very grateful for that man. I don't even remember his name, but I hope to go back and like tell him thank you one day, probably when I go back for the retreat. But um. Yeah, if it wasn't for him, I would have had to just abandon my stuff at camp and just drive back into town, which town was an hour and a half away. So once he had finished helping me pack my car, he asked me, he was like, are you okay to drive? And I was like, well, yeah, like what other option do I have? Because I didn't want to just leave my car at the campground. And I also didn't want, like, I can't be a passenger in my car because it's so full of stuff. So I was like, yeah, I mean, it's my only option. There was no cell phone service out there to call for help. And if you've ever driven to the Gila Cliff Dwellings from Silver City, you know that the road is not the best. It's like a one lane paved road. And at night, it's really sketchy to like drive it because it's super windy with lots of cliffs that drop off to either side. And so I was driving panicked you know trying to get to the hospital but also trying not to drive myself off the side of a cliff um so i made it to the er in silver city shout out to gila regional medical center all of your emergency room nurses were so nice um but yeah i basically checked in and i was like so i cut my finger and the lady doing check-ins was like okay have a seat the triage person will see you in a minute and i was like okay so I sat down and I was waiting for probably 45 minutes to an hour, which I know it's the ER, but you would think like I, I told them that I chopped my finger, like <laughs> let's move up the priority list a little bit. Um, but no, uh, they took me into the triage clinic and evaluated me and were like, yep, you definitely need stitches and we'll see you back here. So they took me back to my own little room and I got there at maybe... 9 30 at night and I didn't leave until 1 30 in the morning um but like I said all of the nursing staff was so nice they kept coming in to check on me and they were like what happened like tell us the story and they were like always coming in to check and see like what's it look like now and they were like so interested in my wound <laughs> and uh I was pretty impressed with myself because all of the nursing staff was like you drove here yourself and I was like yeah I mean, I was camping by myself and I had like no other option. And they were like, but you have a ride home, right? And I was like, no, I'm my ride home. And they were like, 
Okay, so that kind of limits the amount of painkillers we can give you. So they could only give me ibuprofen in the hospital. <laughs> and they luckily gave me some harder painkillers to take home with me. And luckily I got, I had a hotel room for the night so I could take them. It wasn't like I was sleeping in my car. Um, but yeah, they were so, so nice. And they were like, you know, if this was me, I would be crying right now. Like, I don't know how you're making jokes and laughing. And I was like... Oh, it's to distract from the pain <laughs> um and I honestly looking back I have no idea how I was able to look at it for so long like the flapping of the tip of my thumb and wrap it up and drive an hour and a half into town without passing out because now every time I think about it, or even when she was trying to, doing the stitches in my thumb, I would try to look at it and I would get so grossed out. Like as soon as I knew someone else was taking care of it, it was like my natural um, reactions to medical stuff kicked back in and it was like, okay, I'm no longer in survival mode. I can be grossed out because someone else is taking care of this now. Um, and that was just really funny because it, like when you're in a survival situation your instincts kick in and it's like I don't got time to be grossed out by this because I need help <laughs> and so I was I'm so grateful to like my body for being able to drive me into town and get to the ER safely and um, I'm still just amazed that that even happened but yeah they put 11 stitches in my thumb I've never had stitches before <laughs> so this has been an interesting experience. This happened Tuesday, and today is Thursday. So it happened two days ago. Um, and now I'm in visiting a friend. So I'm very grateful for my friend to look after me um, and give me a place to, like, heal. <laughs> but, yeah, this is not where I planned on going with this video. But uh, that's the story of how I injured myself while camping an hour and a half out of service and then drove myself to the ER to get 11 stitches. Um, probably the most crazy wild experience that I've ever had. Kind of traumatic. Don't know if I'll be chopping wood for a fire anytime soon. And honestly, I was watching this like bushcraft video earlier today and the guy was chopping wood for a fire and I was cringing, like physically like wanting to vomit because I was like, oh my God, triggered. So that's something that I get to work on moving forward. Um, I'm supposed to keep the stitches in for another like 10 days, I think, 10 to 12 days. And then I get to go see someone to take them out. So that'll be another fun adventure. Maybe I'll include that in this vlog. Well, it's now day seven after chopping my thumb and uh, I will not be able to share me getting my stitches out in this video because I have to post this video and I have to keep the stitches in for another week maybe. Um, I have to post this video now because I have a brand deal video that I agreed to before I injured myself that has to go out March 16th. I basically told the brand, hey, I chopped my finger and they're like, I'm sorry, film the video anyways. So uh, yeah, this is the reality of not working a real job is you don't get real sick time uh, or sympathy from brands. So um, I really didn't want to share this video until I had like a happy ending, uh, but that's not the case. This is real time update. I still have stitches in my thumb and it hurts like a motherfucker. Um, I honestly would not have been able to film the brand deal video if it wasn't for my boyfriend's help. Um, so I'm very grateful for that and also grateful for him, like, letting me stay in his trailer right now, but, yeah, this is not how I pictured my month of March, let's just say that. But, uh, yeah, that's the story, and, uh, I don't recommend chopping your thumb off while camping an hour and a half out of service. <laughs> If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know down in the comments, have you ever chopped a finger off? How did that go for you? Uh, my dad actually chopped this exact thumb on his left hand, but he chopped it like back behind the knuckle. So he had, he just didn't have a thumb. He had a little nub. So I'm grateful that they could stitch it back together. Um, but yeah, if you've had any traumatic experience like this with stitches, um, let me know in the comments, please spare me the like gross bloody details. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious to know, how did how did it go? Did you heal all right? <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs>
Anyways, uh, if you watch this video all the way to the end, I appreciate you. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe down below so that you don't miss the next adventures of injured car camping. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>